Hey guys, Oshrek Vox here, and today I want to talk about the Diamonds. More importantly, will they actually be good villains? Now, it's important to remember, the Diamonds have been built up since Season 1, since the return and Jailbreak. But honestly, they've been built up even before then. Since the very beginning, the Phantom has thought, who created the, like, who are the leader of the gems, who created them, and a lot of people thought that would be a diamond, the leader, the end all to be all. And as we learned more and more of the looming threat of Homeworld, eventually by the time the Season 1 finale came around, we saw the inside of the ship had the Diamond Exignia, representing White Diamond, Blue Diamond, and Yellow Diamond. And eventually we went back and people made the connection of the original Diamond Authority symbol, which included Pink Diamond. And since, since we had tons of buildup for the Diamonds, mainly through Peridot, and the two-parter could have been great and message received. The latter actually introducing Yellow Diamond into the fray. But surprisingly, since then, it's been an entire season, and we really, really haven't heard from the Diamonds. We had the Rubies, but they were mainly just concerned about Jasper. And not the most competent, so we really couldn't get a vibe of what Yellow Diamond is feeling when they were sent to retrieve Jasper. And as for Blue Diamond and White Diamond, well, at least we've seen Blue Diamond in a flashback, but White Diamond, we haven't heard her peep out of. We just can use context to infer that she is the leader of all the diamonds. She is the one who controls Homeworld. Now, there have been countless of breakdowns of the murals, so I don't want to retread old ground. But I'm very, very concerned. We're in the show's fourth season, and while there's still a bit of episodes to go for the fourth season, being only halfway through that season, I still find it weird how we have not had a conversation with any diamonds. We have not had a face-to-face -face conversation between Steven and Yellow Diamond, Blue Diamond, or White Diamond. And maybe this wouldn't be such a big deal if there weren't three of them. That's three antagonists, major antagonists, that people have very high expectations for, yet we haven't even heard a single peep from two of them. And one of them, the only interaction we really had was a FaceTime call. I don't know about you, but since we are four seasons in, that's very concerning. Now, we don't need a large sum of episodes to establish a good villain. After all, I feel like Jasper was a pretty good antagonist being the perfect foil to the Crystal Gems. Yet she's actually only in a small number of episodes in seasons 1, 2, and 3. Only being in 9 episodes. And that includes Malachite. Not including Malachite, she was only in 8 episodes. And one of those episodes was just a nightmare sequence of Steven being inside Malachite's subconscious. And since these episodes are only 12 minutes, that's not really much to go off of. Yet in that small time, they managed to make a really memorable villain, an antagonist, who in her final moments was actually really tragic. However, I don't want only eight, seven, nine episodes for Yellow Diamond, Blue Diamond, and White Diamond because they're supposed to be the major antagonists. Jasper's just like a lackey. And if Message Received is anything to go off of, the Diamonds aren't exactly together in Homeworld. In fact, it looks like they're scattered off in their own galaxies, attaining their own duties. At the same time, in Back to the Moon, the Rubies won at quote unquote Jasper to file a report in person, so that implies that Yellow Diamond actually is on Homeworld. And since Warpads are a thing, it's entirely possible they're just in and out of Homeworld, while also keeping their own colonies in check. But it's no longer part of a mystery, but becoming an issue how little we know of the Diamonds. How little we've seen of the Diamonds. And before I continue, let me tell you why I'm expected to be disappointed with the Diamonds. I don't want to be, yet it's already kind of established in my head, and that's from Gravity Falls and Bill Cipher. And even to an extent, Little Gideon. While Gideon was a fantastic villain in Season 1, not only for being a great foil to Dipper and Mabel in the handful of episodes he starred in, but he even appeared in episodes where he wasn't the main focus, and he still managed to make Stan's life a living hell. And then Season 2 happened where he only appeared in two episodes as the antagonist. And that shouldn't be a big deal because the show was switching over to Bill Cipher as the main focus as the main antagonist. However, Disney XD ran a promo of Gideon's letter from jail foreshadowing his breakout in 2014. Gideon would not appear in the show again until The Centurion Candidate, which aired in August of 2015. An episode which still ended with him in the confines of prison, only for him to make a deal with Bill Cipher at the end of the credits, but we never actually see what that deal was. We see in Wormageddon Part 1, after the entire prison is broken out of jail thanks to giant gompers, Gideon is now a sheriff for Bill. And then Dipper gives him a 30 second speech and suddenly Gideon is good. Not rewarding at all. 
it was complete 180 without the actual setup, that's the case of turning a great villain, yet having him go out on a very low note. However, Bill is definitely the worst offender of this, appearing in nearly every episode with a triangular symbol and one eye, only to be introduced at the very end of Season 1, Dreamscaperers. After that, we see him early on in Season 2 in the episode Sock Opera, which establishes him as an antagonist, someone you should be afraid of, and then... Not a peep out of him until the last Mablecorn, where he threatens Ford, and in the post credits of the episode, we see that he's going to pick out his next pawn to possess. Of course, the episode also had the major revelation of Ford and Bill's partnership that blew up in Ford's face. And then after that, we have the fantastic ending to the episode, Dipper and Mabel vs. the Future, which leads it into Weird Mageddon, and then it just all falls apart from there. We don't learn that much more about Bill, and while he is threatening in Weird Mageddon Part 1, and Boomer getting part 2, his plan loses a lot of sense of tension, as he's only confined to the town. In Boomer getting part 3, he has his henchmen fight his battles for him, and when he actually does get involved in the battle, we don't see it. And while I love Bill as a character, as a villain he was very disappointing. Not only because of his small appearance throughout the series, but once he finally achieves his master plan, something a lot of antagonists and anything don't really get to accomplish, He's just twiddling his thumbs, and his motive is to destroy the universe because why not? In a sense, it's genius. Dipper and Ford follow the rules. They apply logic to everything. They want answers. Bill is all about not having any answers, not having any rules, just pure chaos. However, the execution for that was very, very mismanaged. And could have been excused if Bill had more exposition, more episodes before Weirdmageddon but he was built to be this mysterious character, only to become a total nutjob and wacky towards the end, not being as cunning as we thought he would be. And that's a sense of expectations, having too high of expectations for something. At the same time, the show built up those expectations. They wanted you to get excited for Bill. They wanted you to crave Bill, to need Bill. And once we got him, it wasn't all he was cracked up to be. And so far, that's exactly what the problem with the diamonds. They need to have good character, and they need to have a good sense of being a villain in Steven Universe. And since there's three of them, I hope they're not all with the same personality. Peridot said Yellow Diamond was the most rational and reasonable one, yet when we saw her, she quickly blew up at Peridot. But now that we know that Rose shattered Pink Diamond, basically killing her sister, it makes sense why Yellow Diamond would be that upset. For the longest time, I always imagined Yellow Diamond to be like Frieza. Tyrannical, merciless, cold. A threat to be reckoned with, over the top, and full of themselves. Now, I don't want that. Because I don't think that would fit the narrative. Show the pressures of being the diamonds. Have Yellow Diamond be under this immense stress of being a leader. Having to be reasonable and rational. And Earth is her only source of some kind of outlet for her anger. Have her be the only diamond who has not moved on from Earth completely. While all the diamonds should still be in some kind of mourning for Pink Diamond, they retreated on Earth for a reason. They pulled their forces back, they should be done. And that's where you have a chance to make Yellow Diamond an interesting character. Because she doesn't know how to let go of the Earth, that's why she wants it destroyed. That's why the only soldiers we've had come to Earth so far have been under Yellow Diamond's court, because she's the only one who's still passionate enough to see the Earth destroyed eager to jump at the chance to destroy anybody who even defends her. And since Jasper thought Steven was Rose, have Yellow Diamond also think Steven is Rose just because of the gem. Have her frustrated and angry at the sight of Steven who just wants to reason with her, and atone for Rose's sins. On the other hand, make Blue Diamond kind of more burned out and sad. After all, Sapphire and Lapis are kind of passive, where do they get that from? Have Blue Diamond be so tired of talking about the Earth and the war and just wanting to move on. Only fighting when really necessary, when pushed to the very limits. From what we saw in the answer, Blue Diamond doesn't like talking longer than she needs to. As soon as she got her vision from Sapphire, she dismissed her. No beating around the bush, no being over the top, just being straight to the point. And this is already a distinction from Yellow Diamond. While Blue Diamond just gets right to the point, Yellow Diamond entertained Peridot's phone call. 
Longer than she probably should have. Okay, but what about White Diamond? She's the one we know the least about. At least we have Yellow, Blue, and even Pink Diamond's themes play in the show. White Diamond is a total enigma. Shrouded in mystery. But if she is the final boss, she needs to embody everything about Homeworld. Not entertaining anything. Having conformity be key. Despite being extremely pissed off by Peridot and her non-conformity, Yellow Diamond still gave her one more chance with the cluster. Blue Diamond clearly cares about her own court, which is why Ruby was the only one who would have gotten shattered. However, I want White Diamond to be the one who would have shattered both Ruby and Sapphire, who wouldn't have given Peridot a second chance for the cluster, but instead have her immediately disposed of and shattered. And that being said about Blue Diamond and Sapphire, who's to say Blue Diamond wouldn't give Lapis a chance to join them? After all, Lapis got screwed over by Homeworld and the Crystal Gems. If Blue Diamond became aware of that, I can totally see her offering Lapis a position at Homeworld, one better than anything she's had before. Of course, Lapis would reject it, but that would be more telling of Blue Diamond than anything. Overall, I just want the Diamonds to be good villains, and not only does it be done through personality, but execution. They cannot be rushed, or else they won't be good villains. Which is why I hope they appear in Season 4 soon, and throughout Season 5. They definitely need more episodes than Jasper to leave a good impression. And not only should they appear together, but they both deserve their own individual episodes. We need some episodes focusing on Yellow Diamond, some episodes focusing on Blue Diamond, some episodes focusing on White Diamond, and of course have episodes sprinkled in between of them together. At least that's how I would do it. And that brings me to the question, how would you do it? What defines a good villain to you? How, what would you think would make the Diamonds great villains? Please share your thoughts down below in the comment section. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps us out. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, support us on Patreon. Links to everything in the description below. And I've been your host, Ostrich Vox, signing out until the next video.